Welcome to Studio Cloud's video tutorial on cloud forms. We're going to go through how to create a form as well as how the signature and, and contract um, part of the cloud forms works. Uh, the first place we're going to go to is the uh, cloud forms manage forms section. Right here we have a list of current forms that we've created previously and we'll go through how to create a new one but I just want to go through each of the items. The trash can over here is the universal delete icon. So this is how to delete a form. The um, pencil mark is the edit icon, the edit button. And then here is where you can view it, in, view it in your browser and you can copy and paste this and send this form directly to somebody to fill out. Um, the embed in website button lets you um, embed the actual form in a website. You have to copy a, a small snippet of, of code, essentially this right there, and you can embed that into a website. This right now is set to have a width and height of 100%. Some websites have issues with that, and so you actually have to manually set exactly the width you want. It just kind of depends on, and we usually recommend doing the width 100% and then switching it over to the exact width and height if you experience any issues. And if you look here, the only thing that's changing is this right here, is that little section right there. That's all it changes. Um, and then you also have the option to actually save. Um, so the embed website just does this little snippet of code which pulls in the website from Studio Cloud into your website, which pulls in the form from Studio Cloud into your website. The save to file doesn't pull in the form from Studio Cloud. It actually takes the entire form and you can actually copy and paste it into your website. Um, please note that if you use the save to file uh, method and copy it into your website, the Studio Cloud support team can't support it just because if you make any changes in the form it can cause all sorts of issues. Um, but if you experience an issue at all with the form and it has exact same issue in the embedding website or the view online, then the support team can step in and resolve any issues you have. We're going to go ahead and step to the process of creating a form. This right here is a blank form and uh, just to have a talking piece, let's go ahead and just create a sample right here. This is a contact sample. We also have a wedding sample. and So this just gives you something to work with uh, so, so you can uh, speed things up so you kind of see how it works and uh, you have two different styles, um, transparent, which uh, is best if you have a colored background. Um, the transparent one will essentially show through whatever the color is, which may or may not work if if you have a, um, a dark background. And so you have the uh, dark style here so that for sure you can see things through. We'll come back to the fields. Let's go actually to these um, forms right here, these fields. So this is the name of the website, contact us example. Name of the form is what I meant to say. This is a title that goes on the top of the browser. The, if, if you embed the form in your website, you will not see the title. And if you save it to a file and copy the form in to your website, you won't see the title either. If you send a link by email to the customer for them to fill out the form using the view online button, then um, they will see it in the browser, the title. So it, it's kind of a preference on on how you want to do it. And if you take that link and have, and they go to your website and they click on that link, um, rather than embedding it or saving it to file, and it, so it takes them to a brand new form, um, then they will also see it. When they fill out the form, you can have it automatically tag them. Um, so you can have multiple for forms, each one having a different tag. Really useful if you're going to um, have different forms for different people so you can tag them. And uh, I mean, you could even have a tag that says online form so you know that they came through your website. Uh, when they fill out the form, it will either create a client or a prospective client. You have to choose which one you want the form to use. If when they fill out the form, their first name and last name, oh, I, I misspoke. If when they fill out the form, their email address are exists in Studio Cloud, it's going to go ahead and merge that form in with the, the client. If they if they fill out the form and there's two email addresses, it's going to check to see if the first and last name map match. And if so, it's going to merge the information into that client. If you fill out a form and it, it there's more than one email address and um, the first and last names do not match, it's going to create a brand new client. So that's kind of how the process it does stuff. Right here we have uh, the group operations and this just lets you uh, select, and if you can see it's selecting right over here, and you can delete multiple items um, at once. Or you can come and click on the um, delete component here button and delete them one at a time. So there's a few different options here. Uh, right now this box name is uh, blank. Um, We'll, we'll come back to that in a sec. The label, the contact us, is a label that's shown over here. First name, last name, email, comments, right there. And then you have these little arrows here. 
that's to move stuff around. I clicked on it and moved the submit button up. Clicked on it and moved it down. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, stick a a let's let's put a box around the name. So we're going to show a box. And we're just going to call it client name. So you can see right there, I put the client name around that box. We're going to show a box, and we're going to do the exact same name, client name. Well, let's just make it exactly the same. So as you can see, it put the box, uh, it, it essentially combined them together. Now if you uh, separate them, all of a sudden there's two boxes, so that's kind of how the form system works. Uh, let's go back to the edit section right there. Um, the prompt, it says the text is first last name, the prompt is last name. Um, we're going to just change that to be I am a prompt. And there it is, I am a prompt. So the prompt goes inside of the text field, and then you have the last name here. And so we have, in this example, we have some pretty basic components. So we're going to go ahead and just step through all the components. And what all of these components do up here is it will automatically insert this into their uh, when they create when they save when they click the submit button it's going to insert whichever field here they filled out into their actual client information so if you had add if you had the uh, um, street right here we'll just go ahead and uh, add a street here doesn't really make sense in this context but um, that will go into the street field in, this, in your Studio Cloud Business Management software. And so in this example, first name, last name, email, and street will all be populate, populated in the uh, client information. Let's just go ahead and uh, delete that street because it looks kind of odd in the contact us form. So each one of these do as you expect. A zip code, um, state, city, street, that's all their address information. You have your phone numbers, email, all this stuff right here will populate directly into the client um, fields. These things will not. These are just visual things. So right here, this over here, the required fields is a label. This up here, the contact us, right there, that's a header. And then you have a, add a custom image. And um, so you can insert the logo. Uh, you can have it automatically resized to a certain width and height if you want to. You can copy a uh, a website image in here. And then you could show a box around it, just like we have for the client name here in the background. And then below here, it will actually show a logo. So right here, this we have just a default customer invoice logo that we're using in this example one. But here's the the link to it. And then uh, you can insert your logo, or you can get any image and, and stick it in there. Whatever works for you. This right here, the text input. Um, same thing as the, the name, same thing as these fields up here, but it goes into the notes section. It doesn't go into the client field. So it essentially gets uh, appended to the notes section. And then you have the text area. Now the difference between these two, this is, uh, people can be confused by this. So right here, this right here is a text input. And it just is one line, and that's it. If you hit enter, it doesn't do anything. This one, multiple lines this is great how are you so um, this one if you expect them to be typing in a lot of information where they could hit the the enter key or else they need to see a lot of information you want to do a text area if it's a, a short uh, snippet of, of information you want to do the text input the checkbox people get a little bit confused about this so let's go ahead and go through the checkbox um, Uh, let's say, so let's do, um, so the label is the label that they will see. Let's, there's a few different ways to do this. So let's first um, put a label in here, and we're going to go, do you like uh, cheese? Now obviously these examples are kind of weird, but it gives you kind of an idea. Yes. Um, and then checkbox is selected by default. I have a checkbox that says no. Okay, in this example, we have a yes and no. Um, do you see how they, they can both be selected at once? Um, that's actually a mistake. What we should have done is we should have done a radio button for this example. 
but uh, it does <coughs> excuse me it does get the point across that um, if you notice when I did the checkbox I did the label but I left the value off okay when they click the submit button or the save button whatever you decide to call the button that actually sends it through um, it's going to record in the notes section the uh, the answer they did yes okay and so um, if you just want to see what the label is recorded in 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 the studio cloud notes section you have it set up where the label is listed and then there's there's nothing for the for the uh, value if on the other hand you want to do it let's do the exact same thing do you like cheese yes In this example, if they click that, it's going to say it's going to sa save it into the notes section of the Studio Cloud um, client when it's created. Do you like cheese? And then it's going to append the value, which is yes. And if it doesn't, it's going to say, do you like cheese? And it's just going to be blank. So um, that's if you want. It, it kind of depends on how you want to set it up. If you want to see the value, because uh, some people said, well, it's saying uh, if you do, uh, let's say you do a. Um, Yes, yes. Let's say I I do this where I do a yes and a yes. You know you notice how if you I put in the label and the value for the yes and the yes, um, that will record for. The, oh, let's go ahead and edit so you can see what I did. There's a yes and a yes. That will save it into the notes section. The label as yes and the value is yes. So it kind of depends on your paradigm. Which what do you want to do? In this situation, you're going to see the, the answer yes twice, which means we probably it would be ideal to do it this method up here. Um, so I'm just uh, the point I'm trying to get across there is that both the label and the value are saved into the notes section. So you need to uh, be aware of that when you're creating your checkboxes. Now, the problem I mentioned up here is that they can select this. Do you like cheese? Yes and no. And let me remove these others so here from here so that we can understand what's going on here easier. Now, um, I've seen examples of people do this saying, um, select what type of appointment you like, and then they'll have a list of 10 different options. And they're all checkboxes, which means that the client can go in there and select every single one. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is, if you only want the client to select one, um, we'll just put uh, yes here. And we're doing this to show, do you like uh, cheese? And then we're going to call this group cheese. And we're going to have the yes selected by default. Not required, but OK. Do you like cheese right there? Yes. And then we're going to add a ready button, another one. And we're going to call it no. And we're going to select do you like cheese from here. And we're going to, if I recall correctly, I did the group ID as cheese. Okay, so now you can see they can only select one. So you want to use radio buttons if they only can select one option. And you want to use um, check boxes if you want them to select one or more. Well, technically zero or more options because they can go like that and select none. If, um, if you want to have it one right after another, um, let's go with do you like cheese? The values, yes. Same same concept concept is with the checkboxes. It's going to save both of these. Now, what I did here, I'm going to um, call it um, cheese two. I'm going to do it as a different group. And that way, if I just called it cheese, it would when I clicked here, it would not let me click there. Now, as you can tell with the radio button, um, you can't unselect it. So as you can see, it's stuck on there. Whereas the checkbox, it can go on and off. Um, this up here, you can unselect it by selecting the other one, but they always have to have at least an answer selected. And that um, is because when we clicked the radio button, we said we selected one of them to be selected by default. Uh, if you did not have one selected by default, these two right here, one they would both be unselected, and it would be required by them to select it by the by your client to select it when they come through here. You have the date picker. Uh, let's say. Pick a date, and this will let them go through and pick a date, and then the time picker, pick a time, 
and then they can select those those options here and then select them accordingly okay we just went through a huge example on how to do the uh, cloud how to create a form we're gonna go ahead and uh, close it and uh, here's here's some other examples we did um, we're gonna move on to the e-contracts now so we're moving to the contracts here we have a contracts that are um, in the system already that we've done previously this one's unsigned this one was signed and you can click the view online it will show you a PDF of it um, so there's there's a multiple different ways to create a contract one you come in here and you click new contract and then we'll just uh, choose Kent Hall and then it has generate an e e-sign contract or generate a printable contract um, if you use the e-sign method it's going to be sent by email and we're going to go ahead and uh, We'll just do a model release one. So we have the information here. It already uh, pre-populated, it already personalized this contract for this um, person, um, but it, it used the document templates that you uh, set up to generate the contract. And then we have the button here where we can send the email to the client. So we'll send the email to the client. They'll be able to, to uh, fill it out and sign it, and then it'll automatically save their signed contract, it'll send you an email, and it'll save their signed, their signed contract in the client in the cloud storage. But you also get an email, and they'll get an email as well with the contract, the PDF version of the contract. Another place that you can go for uh, contracts to uh, send them is you can just go edit the client, go to more actions, generate document contract, and then here you can do the exact same thing, generate e-sign contract or generate printable one. Uh, and uh, that's how it works. And I don't, let's see, um, I don't have a contract. If, if I did have a contract signed, it would be shown right here and it would say contract signed. And uh, you could download it, it would be the PDF version and view it. And that is how you uh, do a cloud form, create a new one. Um, and how you also uh, do contracts. The printable contracts are included in the free business management software if you want to do e-signatures or if you want to do uh, forms you do need to have the cloud form subscription. If you have any more questions you can go to our live chat operators on our webpage or you can go to the forum um, or uh, as I mentioned at the start you can go to our written tutorials to view the most up-to-date information regarding how to use the forms.